Hello, welcome to lesson 11. In this lesson, we are going to look at defects in images or what we call aberrations. When you talk of aberrations in images, this is the distortion of images formed by either spherical mirrors or spherical lenses. There are two types of aberrations, namely, you have what you call the chromatic aberration and then the spherical aberration. Let us begin by looking at the chromatic aberration. This is the coloring of the images produced by a lens. Chromatic aberration is the coloring of the image or of the images produced by a lens. So if we have a lens here, so you can see if we have white light coming into the lens, there are going to be uh, white light on the lens are going to be refracted because remember this white light has different colors, it has different component colors. So the different components are going to be refracted by different amounts. So they will be focusing at different foci. And therefore, the images corresponding to the different colors are formed in different positions along, are going to be formed at different positions along the principal axis of the lens. So we shall have different images by the different colors. And so the images, or the image is going to be viewed, the final image is going to be viewed as being colored or having colored images. The image is going to be viewed as having colored images. Sorry, colored edges. So the image is going to be having colored edges. And that is what we call chromatic aberration. So when we see that image with colored edges or with the coloration, then we say chromatic aberration has taken place. And that is experienced when we have spherical lenses or mirrors. Let us see how we can minimize this effect. We can minimize this effect of chromatic aberration. Uh, first of all, by we need to know we can uh, we can minimize or reduce this by using a chromatic doublet by using a chromatic doublet. And what is a chromatic doublet? A chromatic doublet uh, consists of a convex lens and a concave lens uh, made of different glass materials then being combined, a combination of a convex lens and a concave lens of different glass materials. Uh, so in that case, the convex lens will be deviating the light and then the concave lens will be cancelling the diversion of light. And therefore, you shall have the image not suffering from chromatic aberration. So this is how chromatic doublet looks like. Uh, the, the chromatic doublet looks like this. The convex lens and then a concave lens combined. Let's make some note here. Uh, we need to note that the distance f the distance fr that means that the distance from the uh, from the focal point or the principal focus of the red light uh, to the principal focus of the violet light which is fv that distance is actually the longitudinal uh, the longitudinal chromatic aberration for the lens. So when we look at that distance from FR to FV, where FR is the principal focus of the red light and FV is the principal focus of the violet light, when we get that the distance between 
those two uh, points, that is FR and FV, that is going to be the longitudinal chromatic aberration for the lens. We call that the longitudinal chromatic aberration of the lens. That's our note. Let's look at the conditions for chromatic doublet to work. One, for a chromatic doublet to work, the lenses should be of different glasses, for example, crown glass and flint glass. They must be of different glasses. Then also, the ratio of their focal length should be equal to the ratio of their dispersing power. So that is very, very important. Now, we need to also know that the separation between them should be uh, equal to the mean of their focal length. That is in case uh, the lenses are not of the same. If in case the lenses are not of the same material. So we can also use lenses which are not of the same material, the convex lens and the concave lens, which are not of the same material. That is very possible. But if in case that happens, then the separation between them uh, should be equal to the mean of their focal length. So I'm saying that if the lenses are of the same glass material, or of the same glass, then should not be in contact with each other. They should not be in contact with each other. And so it means that the separation between them should be equal to the mean of their focal length. Let us go ahead and look at uh, spherical aberration. Uh, spherical aberration, this is the distortion of the image by either a lens or a mirror of a wide aperture. So it's a distortion of the image by either a lens or a mirror of a wide aperture. Now, uh, this is used as a result of uh, marginal rays being converged nearer the lens, nearer the lens or the mirror than the paraxial rays. Let us see this. So we find that the marginal rays are being converged nearer the lens than the than the, sorry, the marginal rays are converging nearer the lens than the paraxial rays. So the paraxial rays, you can see these paraxial rays, are converged far away from the lens, while the marginal rays are converged nearer the lens. So that's what happened. So when a wide beam of white light, when a wide beam of light, white light is incident on either a lens, or it can be also a mirror of a wide aperture, the central rays are brought to converge far away. These paraxial rays or the central rays converge far away. And then these other rays, the marginal rays, are then for them they are converged nearer. Those rays which are far from the principal axis are converged nearer to the lens. The image formed in this case is circular blood uh, due to the several, because remember we shall have an image here, another image here, and the, for the different rays we shall have different images. So because of that we shall have circular, we shall have uh, uh, circular blood image uh, due to this series of images of the same object because we shall have different so having image here, image here, image throughout this and that means that we shall have a circular blood image. So that will not be clear. The image will not also be clear. Let's look at the ways how we can minimize spherical aberration. Now in lenses 
spherical aberration can be minimized using a stopper that is to say using an opaque disc with a circular hole to cut off the marginal rays so it means that remember if you look at this if you, if you look at this these marginal rays are the ones which leads to the formation of the marginal rays leads to the formation of the multiple images so what we do put a disc to cut off this marginal ray to cut off this marginal ray this is marginal rays then you remain with only the principal rays and then we shall be having we shall be having no spherical aberration so let us see how that cuts it off so when you cut off this you cut off that we shall only have this ray and we shall have only one image now the, dis uh, the disadvantage of this method is that uh, light intensity is cut down and the brightness of the image is reduced because we are cutting some of the light so the brightness of the image is reduced that's the only disadvantage now let's make some note here about the circular stop first of all uh, that the circular stop that circular stop we have used that is to minimize all of that we use to minimize uh, the spherical aberration is an opaque disc having a hole in the middle so have an opaque disc having a hole in the middle for allowing only the paroxysmal rays incident on the lens we can also use plano convex lens with the curved sides and use plano convex lens with the curved side facing the incident rays that can also be done can use plano convex lens now for mirrors spherical aberration can be minimized by using parabolic mirrors so so just using curved mirrors the concave mirror can use the parabolic mirrors to minimize spherical aberration now this is because the parabolic mirrors converge wide beam of light or a wide parallel beam of light incident onto it to onto it to a single focus so when you look at the parabolic mirror the light is converged to a single focus if you consider a parabolic mirror that's why you can use parabolic mirror. So all the light rays, then the, para, the, the marginal rays will all be converged to a single focus. So that's how you can minimize it in convex, uh, sorry, in the mirrors, in the converging mirrors. Let's look at the comparison of narrow and wide aperture lenses uh, lenses of uh, narrow aperture are widely used in optical instruments so as to avoid spherical aberration uh, this is because when a wide beam of light falls on the lens or on a lens of a narrow aperture all rays or all paroxysmal rays and uh, all rays are paroxysmal that is all rays are paroxysmal and are thus brought to a single focus to form a sharp image however a lens with a wide aperture a lens with a wide aperture when we talk of the aperture we're talking about the diameter of that lens the lens of a wide aperture allows in both paraxial rays and the marginal rays which are thus brought to different focus to form a blurred image so that is the comparison between the narrow and wide aperture lenses Thank you for your attention. We meet in the next lesson 
where we are actually going to be looking at or we are going to introduce optical instruments.